Hi, my name is Chris Watkin. This is London Property TV. Roll those titles. Welcome to the second episode of London Property TV. And on this week's episode, we've gone to Clapham where we meet your own and the Clapham bid people. And we see why it's such a wonderful place to work, live and invest in. Also in this week's show, we are talking about whether London Buy to Let is the place to invest your money. Let's have a look. Should you be getting into Buy to Let in London? And quite frankly, it all comes down to your personal opinion and your choice on when it comes to investment. The biggest thing you have to consider when a landlord is, is that you're not going to be living in the property. Now it's human nature to want to buy the best for yourself, especially when you're buying your own home. But when it comes to buy to let, the important considerations are completely different. Let's look at the numbers. So what I want to do is split down the types of properties from detached, semi, terraced and flats and apartments. So let's start with detached houses. The average value of a property of a detached house in London is one million and sixty-eight thousand pounds the average rent is three thousand six hundred pounds a month which gives an average yield of four point one three percent let's look at semis semi detached houses the average value of a property is seven hundred and eleven thousand pounds and the average rent in greater london is two thousand six hundred and five pounds a month giving an average yield of four point three nine percent Moving on to terraced houses, the average value of a property of a Greater London terraced house is 713,900, giving an average rent of 2,167 pounds a month, giving a yield of 3.64%. The average value of a flat in Greater London is 501,500 pounds, and the average rent is 2,107 pounds a month, giving an absolutely fantastic gross yield of 5.04% but you've got to remember with apartments that you've got those nasty service charges which will bring the yield down. Moving now on to capital growth, which is on the other side of the coin. Over the last 22 years, a detached house in London has gone up in value by 465%. Semi-detached houses have gone up by 510%. Flats and apartments have gone up by a really impressive 571%. But the real winners are terraced houses, which have gone up a massive 578%. So there we have it. It really comes down to a balancing act. The first balancing act is between capital growth and yield. As I said before, it's very rare to have a property with high yield and high capital growth. So you've got to decide where you are on that balancing, on that seesaw. The other consideration is void periods, because when there is a void period, there's no rent coming in. Final consideration is the difference between gross yields and net yields. Remember with apartments, you have those service charges and maintenance costs, which do bring the yield down. Really what you need to be doing is this, talking to a number of local letting and estate agents, show them your portfolio and see where you are in terms of where you want from your investment. Do you want capital growth? Do you want yield or do you want something in between? And quite frankly, go and talk to a professional because you wouldn't dream of buying stocks and shares by yourself so why the hell wouldn't you buy a buy to let property without talking to a professional speak to your local letting agents talk to many of them build relationships and you will win especially in this market interesting times in the london buy to let market let's go over to your own in clapham and find out why it's such a great place to live work and invest Each week I like to go to a different part of London and talk about that local property market because London isn't just one big lump, it's lots of little segments like a fly's eye. And this week I'm in Clapham and I'm with my very good friend Jeroen. Hello Jeroen. How's it going Chris? Talk to me about Clapham. Clapham's a great place. Uh, I speak to a lot of buy-to-let investors that want to get in on the investment action here in Clapham. 60% uh, of the market is actually made up of flats. 60%? 60%, yeah. Wow. As opposed to family homes. So it's quite disproportionate. And you'll see as you look up and down the high street, there's a lot of bars, clubs, restaurants. 
uh, and of course the wide expanse of Clapham Common behind us that keeps the young folk entertained. What, so it's almost like a little, is it like a little town? Because we're not that far away from the centre of London here, are we? It, it is a little town unto itself. Uh, we are actually sitting in Clapham Old Town um, and it feels a bit towny here. If you go behind off the, uh, the main Clapham Common, it'll get really pedestrianised, lots of little uh, wine bars and tapas places, uh, boutique cinemas. Well, these are all important considerations, especially for buy-to-let landlords, because you've got the demand there. So, I mean, let's talk some numbers here. So let's start off with, say, like a one-bedroom apartment. What can you buy that for and what can you rent it for? Well, you're looking, the average one-bedroom apartments around Clapham cost between 350 and £400,000, depending on the, the location and, of course, the condition. Uh, rents, you're talking between 1350 and 1450 per calendar month. That's a decent yield, isn't it? it? It's a reasonable yield, yeah. I mean, the uh, the real money is, of course, made when you add some value. Uh, new builds are plenty here in Clapham. They're becoming less common. Um, but, of course, you're paying a developer's premium for a new mm. product like that. There's still a lot of money to be made in buy to let as long as you're adding value and making sure that your location has the right <coughs> type of demand. OK, let's talk about how you can add value in a second. Uh, let's go with two-bedroom apartments. What can you buy those for and what, and what do they rent out at? Well, two-bedroom apartments, your average Victorian conversion in the area is about 450 to 550 to buy. Um, you can go even more expensive. It all depends on the square footage. Uh, the average pound per square foot in Clapham is between 700 and 1,000, depending on what road in what particular area. There's quite a bit of That's quite there. a gap, don't you it think? It is quite a gap. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I have seen some developments even break the 1,000 pound a foot marker in Clapham. Now, you are quite famous for looking at buy-to-let deals south of the, south of the r river. Have you got some top tips for buy-to-let landlords out there that, where they can add value and make some decent money on top of just following the market? Uh, definitely, definitely, definitely. I think the key really is to uh, be prepared to put in a little bit more work. Um, the days have gone where you can just buy a buy-to-let investment in London, let it sit there and hope to make money from mm. capital appreciation. So you really want to be looking at something where you can add value, and that's not buying a flat at 250, spending 50 grand and getting a flat that's worth 300. You've really got to find that difference between what you're buying it for, what you're spending in work, and the end product, as it were. So buy cheap, refurbish to a high standard, and if you can, even try and make an extra bedroom by reconfiguring, which I've done in the past as well. Uh, your own, we, we've known each other now for three or four years, and it's one thing I know about you is, is that you can spot a deal and you can flip things really quickly. Have you got any stories of where you've helped a landlord buy something, make some money? Obviously you've made some money at the same time. Talk to the guys at home. Uh, well, I, I have helped a few landlords in the past, absolutely. Uh, there's been several different projects that I've worked on, uh, ranging from sort of buy-to-let investments where they're looking to hold it for a longer term, uh, or where they're looking to buy it and, and flip it, the flip and flop. I, I helped a client uh, source a property through auction as it happens. Uh, she bought that property for 225, princely sum. She spent about 25, 30,000. What sort of property was it? Uh, well, that was a, actually a two bedroom small house. It was a very old property. Um, and she's brought it right back up to the 21st century, uh, put some modern features in there, uh, but still retained a lot of the character, which is nice. And, and buyers do like yep. that very much. Um, so she's selling that on for £320,000. For more information about the Clapham property market, visit the Clapham property blog written by this man here. That's www.clappenpropertyblog.com. Absolutely fascinating stuff there from your own. Let's go and talk to Jeremy from Clapham Bin and find out why it's such a great place to do business in. Clapham's an amazing area to, to both live and work. It's got amazing green space in uh, Clapham Common. It's got a new leisure centre, a new library. The high street's really uh, buzzing with daytime and, and nighttime trade, great coffee, great restaurants. We have a Michelin starred restaurant in, in Clapham through to a vi wide variety of, of burger restaurants. So you can enjoy a day out in Clapham from nine o'clock in the morning through to the early hours of the evening. Fascinating stuff there from Jeremy. Let's go and speak with Paige at Summer Green about what's happening in the Clapham property market. My name's Paige, I work for Summer Green. I love working for Summer Green. Good stuff, why is that? Because I work in Clapham and it's full of brilliant people and I love property. Why do you think landlords should buy properties in Clapham? 
because it's a great place. Um, rentals are absolutely brilliant here. There's never really a quiet moment in Clapham Common. Um, it's a place to live, really. It's a really it's, it's somewhere that everyone wants to go to, Clapham Common. Do you live here yourself? I don't myself. I live in West London. Just if I could afford to live in Clapham Common, I would. <laughs> I love Clapham because it offers me a quality of life, school around the corner, biz, uh, business um, as a restauranter. That's why I love Clapham. I think it's good for families, is big houses, big common, not too far from London Central, just has everything you need. Just want to say a big, huge thanks for everyone who looked after us in Clapham. That's the end of episode two. We look forward to seeing you next week in episode three.